Hi everyone, Surfer Clock here, and welcome to Fed Up number 3. Why are theme park employees so mean? In our last installment of Fed Up, Tap G dared to ask why people who visit theme parks seem to act so thoughtlessly. But just like everybody has that one anecdote of that one guy who got into a shouting match with a locker attendant, everyone has that one story where a theme park employee was being an outright jerk to them. Don't act like you don't, dear listener. You know you do. But why? Theme park employees are supposed to be happy and energetic and let you do anything you want, right? Well, yeah, that's the idealistic view and the corporate executives want you to think that, as does the marketing department. But sadly, reality is, once again, not so kind. For one reason or another, theme park employees will either be jerks or seem to be jerks for no reason at all. But just like why the park patrons act impulsively, there's multiple reasons at work here. Some valid, some not. Here are my top five reasons why theme park employees are so mean. Number five. It's a job. And just like other jobs, it comes with its typical job stresses. Minimal pay, late hours, early hours, coworker drama, pressure from management, difficult clients, and an uncomfortable dress code to boot. Shocking as it may seem, the theme park employees don't get paid very well. And kind of like fast food workers, their enthusiasm for a job which barely covers rent is often proportional to the pay amount. In some parks, working 50 to 60 or even 70 hours a week isn't unheard of. Any job is hard, and working in theme parks is no exception. That's not to say if they were paid more they'd do better at their job, but, well, a little incentive goes a long way. Number 4. It's hot and crowded. In the last Fed Up, Tap G lists this as the number two reason why park patrons do impulsive and sometimes stupid things. The major difference here is when you visit the park, you can take in an air-conditioned show, get a bottle of water, find a cafe to chill at, or just get out of the heat. But when you're paid to stand in heat and humidity and charged with responsibilities, it's a whole different ball game. And let's not forget the uniforms or costumes aren't always heat or humidity friendly. Having to be both outgoing and friendly in 90 degree Florida heat with 90% humidity is no easy task, especially since in these conditions patrons get cranky. And let's not forget, bad moods spread like wildfires. Number 3. Their disposition is incongruent with the company's values. What does that mean? Simply put, they are either already jerks from the get-go or their training was insufficient. As much as we try to explain away that sometimes in fact, most times, when employees are just upholding policies, once in a great while they are just not right for the job. Or, again, they're just bona fide jerks. Of course, if you're a big enough jerk at your job, it isn't long before you lose it. The same thing happens at theme parks. Now, we can't pretend that unhappy or disrespectful employees don't work at the theme parks because they do. And if you come across an employee who is rude or disrespectful, please don't hesitate to stop by guest relations and report him or her. Number 2. They have to answer the same questions over and over again. Everyone has that friend or relative that constantly asks the same questions all the time. Or you've looked after a child whose memory matches a goldfish. In any case, having to answer the same questions multiple times can certainly try one's patience. This one is certainly far from personal. It's the mere repetition that irks many a park employee. Every park employee can recall a time when someone asked, where are the restrooms? They explained in full, only to have someone nose in at the tail end and ask, hey, excuse me, where are the restrooms? Not coincidentally, this is the number one question asked in any park, and for good reason. Human nature, the devilish beast it is, is inherently lazy and is unwilling to put up with more work than necessary. So instead of trying to read directional signs or reading park maps or reading menus and so on, the patrons resort to asking since it's easier to hear something than to read about it. Or, to be fair, the aforementioned signage is illegible or confusing, causing many a guest to ask and causing many employees to reply over and over and over. Again, nothing personal. So, what's the number one reason why theme park employees are so mean? Number one! The park companies have to protect their investments. Does this imply abuse? Well, not really. Going to a friend's house is like visiting an amusement park. You're there for pleasure, have a good time, and you're on good terms with the owners. But their hospitality can only go so far. You wouldn't track mud in their house, bring more friends than allowed, or spill soda and not tell them. To make this simple to demonstrate, let's cite a few examples. Why can't I bring my soda or ice cream on this ride or in the show? There's a high risk of spills. Too many patrons with food would make for costly nightly cleanups. Why can't my kid ride? Why the height requirements? 
Park lawyers determined that at a certain height or age, children's bodies should be able to handle Ride's G-forces, and children any younger or shorter would very likely be severely injured. In other words, if a three-year-old goes on a roller coaster and gets hurt or worse, dies, the park is not responsible as long as a strict height requirement is in place and fully enforced. Hey, why can't I bring in my stroller, wheelchair, or scooter? Rides and shows do not have a lot of room in queues or loading areas. By minimizing the amount of vehicles in a small area, it makes for a less dangerous situation and more room is freed up for the guests. Why can't you shut down the ride so I can get my hat I lost? Well, that would mean inconveniencing a lot of people who are waiting to ride. In some cases, it can take up to an hour to power down a ride, get everyone off, get the hat, and power it back up. Why can't I add more people to my party? Ride shows and especially restaurants have limited capacity. Adding a person or persons at the last minute inconveniences those waiting, takes up additional anticipated capacity, and to the staff can come off as just plain rude. Why can't I go in once the show starts? In dark theaters, a flash of light from an opening door in the back can distract or throw off a performer. It creates a bad show for the audience if the actors get distracted by said flash of light. I could go on. And frankly, I want listeners out there to comment below and tell us what you've heard from theme parks that rubbed you the wrong way. As theme park critics, it's our job to explain why theme parks function the way they do, whether it can be justified or not. But for the most part, employees at the parks aren't mean per se, just in a bad circumstance. Well, usually. I'm Surfer Clock, and I'm fed up.